Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Fish Friday number 73 and we have a good one for you today. Today's fish has become really popular among a certain community on the internet, more specifically the iFunny community. I was scrolling through, saw this, thought it would be a really interesting fish for us to do today. Today's fish that we're going to be talking about is... Bam! The Tasseled wabagong so the tasseled wabagong or scientific name eucrosorhinus dazipogon again that is eucrosorhinus dazipogon pogon um it is part of the family erectolobidae um the erectolobidae is the wabagong family or as more properly known the carpet sharks um if you know anything about wabagongs it's not hard to know why they are called carpet sharks. Um, they predominantly are extremely flat, um, you know, laying on the bottom. They act like a carpet. <laughs> um, but do you know where the word wabagong actually comes from? Wabagong, the word itself, is actually believed to come from the Australian Aboriginal language, and it's supposed to uh, come from the word or words that mean shaggy beard there you go in terms of the tasseled wabagong the tasseled wabagong is found on the continental shelf of northern australia up to new guinea um, and throughout all those islands in there they're actually a relatively common shark there um, but that's where you can find these so and i believe most of the wabagongs are found um, in that sort of area and that's why they're, um, why potentially the Wabagong's common name actually comes from that, from the Australian Aboriginal language. Um, in terms of where they live, they are found in uh, coral reefs in both inshore and offshore waters. Now, inshore waters, you might want to think, well, you know, it's a shark. What's an in inshore water? You might be thinking rivers or like inshore waters are uh, places that get submerged under high tide so under high tide you know how the tide comes up and it covers the area and when the tide goes back down there's usually these little tide pools they can be found in there as well um, but they're predominantly found in offshore waters and they're found basically everywhere from shallow waters about six feet deep down to um around 50 meters which is 160 feet deep so basically two meters down to uh, 50 meters um, and they're most often encountered in these reef channels. So these reefs usually have little um, valleys where there's a lot of sand that gathers, it's been worn away, and that's where these seem to be encountered the most. But they do seem to be very, very dependent on living on those coral reefs. Um, you know, Great Barrier Reef, things like that. Um, as with most wabagongs, it is a very you know, flattened shark, very broad. It's not as flattened as some of the others, but it's it's more moderately flattened than some of the other wabagongs. And it is larger than most people would believe. Um, if you see this picture here, you know, most people, for some reason, people get in their minds that wabagongs are actually a fairly small um, shark. And in fact, wabagongs, uh, the tasseled wabagong is reliably known to re reach a length of 1.8 meters, which is 5.9 feet. So almost six feet in length. That's, I'm not saying that's enormous, but a lot of times people think of wabagongs being rather small individual. And most of the time, you know, they're sitting more at that four feet, but they, you know, they do get larger. Um, in terms of other characteristics, obviously the head is wider than long, um, you know, real flat, wide head. And then they have these nostrils that have these branching barbels coming up. You can see these nostrils right here with these long, thick barbels right there. Um, really, really interesting. Um, and the nostrils also have a groove that surrounds them and connects them to the mouth. I'm not sure, just a little interesting fact about their nostrils, of all things, their nostrils. 
Um, they do have tubercles uh, above the eye. And then they also have spiracles that sit behind the eye. So you can see these tubercles right there. And then this spiracle right here. Um, I'm not saying that's characteristic, but I'm just trying to give you an example, uh, an idea of where their spiracles are. Um, now their pectoral and pelvic fins are very rounded. So you can see here, they don't have the real pointed fish fin. They're very rounded. That's to help them kind of suction themselves to the bottom and also just kind of to walk um, in a way. Um, but don't think that these can't swim. These definitely can't swim, can swim. Um, in terms of the tail fin, the caudal fin is very short and it does not have a lower lobe. You know, when you think of a shark fin, it has this long upper piece and then this short lower piece. It really doesn't have this lower lobe and the upper lobe has a strong notch in it. Um, but beyond all of this, you know, it's a tasseled wobblegong. It's got this super distinctive, um, fringe of branching lobes and those are those are actual skin lobes um, so it's you know it's very distinctive and that's why it's got this name this tasseled wobblegong and it runs continuously from the snout all the way to the tips of the um, pectoral fin so you got this all the way around this is a head-on view here you can see it's got this beard um, on the chin which even completes it on the upper jaw it kind of starts behind the nostril so there is a tiny tiny gap where there is no um feel you know, but basically it's got this nice beard um mrs ping would say that it's very it's much nicer and much more well kept than mine i would disagree but you know that's what a wife is for to disagree with you just playing i love her to death um, in terms of the color patterns, they do vary, but they kind of sit at this very blotchy lines, vermiculated pattern. You know, it's, it's very well camouflaged when they're exposed, when they're in their environment. It doesn't seem like it, but it's, you know, they, they just have this variable color pattern. In fact, if you're looking for pictures, um, you can just go through here and see just the tons of different different color patterns it's it's hard to pin down a color pattern but it's all based around that kind of mosaic vermiculated uh, pattern and then they have this white belly um, as with most bottom dwelling things and most fish in general they have this real pale pale underside um, they are a um, the well before I go on the fringe and the coloration combined is why the tasseled wobbegong is considered the most specialized member of its family. All the wobbegongs kind of have the same body shape, but the tasseled wobbegong with its beard, its coloration, that's really what sets this apart from other wobbegongs, why it is so specialized. Um, and the combination is just real, it really is excellent camouflage. Um, when they are way down, it really breaks up their pattern and can be very difficult to uh, see. They are a solitary shark. They do not um, gather in groups. They're very, very solitary. I believe they only got together during breeding times. Um, and it spends the day basically lying motionless and becomes more active that night. And this is when it actually swims. They actually swim onto the reefs to hunt. They don't hunt during the day where a lot of people think that they're just sitting there. Um, but they will, don't get me wrong, but they're much more active at night and go becoming like to an active hunting mode. Uh, versus when they're in the day, if something's coming close, they will feed and grab, but it's not quite as much. And they feed on everything. Fish, crustaceans, cephalopods, you know, squids, things like this. They'll feed anything. Um, and they just swallow the food. You've, everyone has seen the video of a different wobble gong, you know, sw uh, opening its mouth and grabbing and swallowing a fish hole. And that's how most of them go. Um, but they'll eat large things. Don't, don't get me wrong. In fact, it was documented um, relatively recently that a 1.3 meter, which is four and a half feet long, tasseled wobble gong 
ate a one meter, three, you know, basically three foot brown banded bamboo shark. You think of those little sharks that you see in aquariums that are usually where you can pet them and things like that. A real smaller shark, kind of cylindrical that has the brown bands. Those are brown banded bamboo sharks. And a four and a half footer ate a basically a three and a half footer, a little under, between three and a half and three feet. So 1.3 for my Europeans and or non-Americans, 1.3 meter and a one meter. So it ate, it ate a, basically something the same size as it. It's, it's definitely up there in terms of voracious predatory behavior. Um, it is a, there's not a lot known about its reproduction, but it is known, it is assumed to be an ovoviparous species, meaning that um, there is internal fertilization and they do not lay eggs in any way but they don't have true live birth and that they don't grow a placenta or things like that you know the, their eggs are just basically retained the young feed off a yolk sac and then eventually they give a live birth now something about the tasseled wabagong is it's no, it's kind of known for aggressive behavior in some circles but it's more than likely not actually that aggressive, just confused. Um, the tasseled wabagong has really poor vision, so chances are its attacks on people are just mis mistakes. Um, you know, the, t the tasseled wabagong is a big ecotourism attraction. You know, when people come to like dive the coral reefs, and if there's tasseled wabagongs in the area, you know, the the leaders of the dive might be able to take them there. And it's, you know, it's a big attraction and divers have, many divers have approached it without incident, but people, some people just aren't nice to animals and they poke and prod and want to see it move. And if you start put moving a hand or a foot near it, it could confuse that as a fish and turn around and bite it, or it could just get frustrated and buy it so it's probably not that aggressive um so i don't know um in terms of what they're used for they they don't really have any economic value other than um ecotourism they're not really fish there's a very very small fishery of them um the skin is actually occasionally used for leather i don't know how good it would be but they're occasionally used for leather and every once in a while you can find them in the aquarium trade but they're usually so incredibly expensive that it kind of deters most people from buying them um i couldn't even find one for sale online i probably could if i did a little more digging but the only wobble gong i did find for sale was thirteen hundred dollars so one thousand three hundred us dollars so it's it's pretty safe. The biggest thing about this and why this uh, fish might be in semi-trouble is the fact that it's so dependent on coral reefs and coral reefs um, are definitely in danger. If you don't know about that, please go do some research on coral reefs. Leave a comment below on what you find on coral reefs if you want. I would enjoy that discussion. So now the interesting fact that we're going to end this video on today. The interesting fact is actually part of their hunting methods um something i did not realize that about at all um there have been tiny fish and crustaceans um that have been seen to settle on top of a wabagong's head um further helping the camouflage but those little fish and crustaceans seem to attract larger fish that are in turn attacked by the wabagong and not only that there have been observations that the wabagong actually does an active luring behavior so when it thinks there is food nearby it will wave its tail back and forth to make its and it'll make its uh the end of its caudal fin resemble a small fish and that's actually why it has this um it's kind of let's see do we have you see this dark eye spot right there? So it'll kind of wiggle that and that'll make it think that it's an eye spot as well. So not like a super tiny fish, but a decent sized fish. And then it'll rest with its head elevated like it is here. 
and that will actually place it in striking distance if anything starts going to the tail so when the fish goes past it to the tail it'll swing around and grab that so it's it's actually a little more um active during the day i think than previously thought it's using just its camouflage and these tiny fish and crustaceans are eating probably the parasites on its skin keeping it clean and it leaves it there and it's it's not worth it for the wabagong to attack these tiny fish but the bigger fish like the little groupers that come to eat it eat those little fish off of it that's a good meal for a wabagong and then it makes its tail look like a distressed fish it's really really interesting behavior really interesting behavior but th thank you guys so much again i really appreciate it hope to see you again please leave a like comment subscribe if you do i'd really appreciate it hope to see you again please leave those comments i've been enjoying um reading them it's just been a blast and i cannot believe that we are less than 30 weeks away from being at 100 weeks of doing this this has just been a blast and i hope you've been enjoying it but once again take care of yourselves take care of your loved ones please leave a like please leave a like comment and subscribe if you do i'd really appreciate it hope to see you again and peace